Hi, I'm Asto, and welcome to Astonished Animations. This video is all about experimentation and exploration. I'm going to use that technique that I showed you in the last video and create something else. Last time I created rice and blender, but this time, originally, I was planning to create a hamburger steak, but it ended up being something different. So, feel free to stay till the end of the video and check out the results. The first step is to add your base mesh into the scene. I have created this cylinder and squashed it into a hamburger steak shape, and then I started adding the particle. For the particle, I created an icosphere with a subdivision of 1. You can use any shapes pretty much, but make sure to not use a mesh with a lot of polygons or your computer is going to explode. After you edit your particle, you can add a particle system onto your base mesh. Make sure you check hair and advanced. I'm going to go down to the render tab and check render as object. Then choose your particle. In this case, it's gonna be my icosphere. After that, you can go back to the Rotation tab or the Render tab to randomize the rotation or scale. Maybe adjust the size of the particles a little bit and play around with the number of particles. After that, I've added this Displace modifier onto the base mesh. I chose a cloud texture for the Displace modifier. After adding the Displace, I went back to the particle system and check Use Modifier Stack because if I don't, the particle system will not recognize the new shape with the Displace. So right here you can see some weird triangular faces on a base mesh. If I keep those faces, the displace is going to look weird and also the distribution of the particles is going to be a little bit weird as well. So I deleted those triangular faces and fill the faces back in using the grid fill function. Now if you have done tweaking the particle system and the shape of the base mesh, you can go ahead and convert the particle system. But make sure you're happy with the shape of the base mesh before you apply the particle system because if you are to edit the base mesh later, it's gonna be difficult. You're going to be moving all those particles as well, so go ahead and convert the particle system, and like last time, while all those particles are selected, assign them to a new collection. This way, we can easily select all the particles in the outliner. Now, go ahead and delete the particle system on the base mesh, and also delete the original particle. Now, select all the particles in the outliner, and shift select one of the particles, and hit Ctrl J to join them into one object. Now we can use the data transfer modifier. Select the base mesh as the source, and then check face corner data, and check custom normals. Go ahead to the object data and enable auto smooth. Now we have some smooth particles following the shading of the base mesh. Now we can add some shading to the particles and the base mesh. I'm going to use that classic NPR technique and run the default shader into a shader to RGB and then run it into a color ramp. And it's all about adjusting the color ramp to your liking. Right here, you can probably tell that I'm not creating a hamburger steak anymore. I'm more like creating some form of fried food. What is your favorite fried food? Mine is gonna be tonkatsu. I mean, they're high in calories, but delicious food are usually high in calories, so yeah, just eat them. And after tweaking all the shaders, this is what I got. A fried piece of food. Let's say it's a fried piece of shit. No, not sh fish. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say it's a piece of fried fish. Why not? By the end of this video, I hope you find this technique useful in creating various type of food in Blender. You can make fried food, rice, and of course, hamburger steak. With rice, why not? Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'm gonna see you in the next video. Maybe it's gonna be a month later, I don't know, but I'm gonna come back and share some stuff with you guys. So thank you so much for your support, and I'm gonna see you in the next video.